That was a long pause. <clears throat> oh, we'll edit that. Hello, happy uh, New Year's Eve, listeners. Happy New Year's Eve, listener Joe. Thanks a lot. Why don't we start when this man's left? Yeah. It's peculiar. Yeah, happy, Thank you. Happy yeah, New Year. Thank Cheers, you, Jules. man. Man. Okay. okay good, 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 good vibrations. What are you doing? Good, good, good. I'm the Beach Boys. Have you heard of me? No. Yes, I'm a popular oh, hang band. On a second, I oh. have. You've, you've got the like the nutty lead singer. I am the nutty lead singer. Are yes, you? yes. Good, good. I've been in bed for five years. Really? Yeah, I'm giant. I'm like a whale, and I'm very depressed. But I'm a genius. Where's this going? Um, nowhere. I, mean, I, I was thinking maybe a game we could play. Oh, yeah. And I'd, I'd pretend to be different bands. I mean, that started off with an easy one, because I sung the biggest hit there, and I told yeah. you who I was yeah. very early on. But what do you think? Is it a New Year's Eve game? Are you drunk already? A little bit. Uh, hello, listeners. This is Adam and Joe's BBC Six Music. It's New Year's Eve. Woo. Uh, we're building up to the, to the biggest party night of the year. Uh, it's when I have a big party. Or where's well, actually when someone else has a big party. I'm going to uh, uh, belch. I don't go. I'm going to belch. Is that a problem? No, it can't. <laughs> oh dear it's a bit much isn't it for new year's eve but it is new year's eve if exactly you... yeah the conventional rules have been thrown out of the window excuse me i'm so sorry about that. that's a revolting thing to do adam's out of control I'm totally he's, out of control he's making no sense <laughs> he's lost all control of all of his uh, faculties of his wind output mechanisms <laughs> in his body my wind farms uh the talking noises make no sense <laughs> <laughs> the burping noises are out of control but don't worry i've got it together yeah uh and we're with you now until uh 10 10 in the evening in the evening uh, at which point uh anybody with any sense will no longer be able to uh form any coherent thoughts listen in uh, a way this is the best part of the whole new year's eve experience it's true isn't it it's the build-up to the chaos yeah because for from around 10 until midnight and certainly around the midnight hour it's no one has a good time really no it's a mixture of melancholy and kind of crazy sort of sinking ship uh lunacy we'll talk more about that uh, later on but right now i think we should play a lot of music we've got a lot of fun music lined up for you joe and it's myself all upbeat yeah no we've, sad songs we've picked some really good stuff that we hope you're going to enjoy and uh right now we're going to continue as we mean to continue on that makes no sense but it's devo here with whip it no, no. Oh, that's Devo. Fantastic. With Whip It. This is Adam and Joe here on New Year's Eve. This is pretty much the end of 2007, so I hope you've made the most of it because it's almost over. I haven't. Have you not? I don't think so. Well, what did you want to do that you didn't do? All sorts of things. Well, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to do them now. You've got five hours left. Five hours to do all the things I wanted to do this year. Yeah, but plus we've got to do the show. All right, well, let's get the show out of the way first. All right, then. Uh, listen, what I did, listeners, you know, because we always like to prepare a great deal for these programs here on Six Music, or, uh, I went out and I bought a review of the year, a book from a uh, bookshop and it was reduced it was four pounds off because the year's almost over so they figure well no one's going to be interested in the year anymore uh so it was a little bit of a bargain but i'm going to be flipping through it throughout the show there we go it's a kind of yeah it's a review of the yearbook so it's got pages on on everything that happened in the year which gives us the opportunity to do one of those exciting talk about what happened in the year shows but you know looking at that book mm. i already feel like i'm living in the past do you? I know it seems like a long time ago some of this stuff. Well, doesn't something it? about 2007 uh reminds me of 1987. In what way? I just think that in the future, I can just imagine us in the future looking back at that book mm. and thinking, why were we interested in any of those things? It feels like the past already. Do you know what I mean? Well, it was not a very... the recent past, but the yeah. ancient past. You've got a a lunatic kind of right-wing nut job in the White House yeah. like you did in the 80s. Uh, you've got a power crazed Thatcherite mm, lunatic in the in the in the Labour House. These are just the piece of <laughs> Joe Cornish, not the big British castle as a you've whole. You've got a sort of man Thatcher. Uh, he left after a while. He he he. Uh, I'm not being controversial. He was very outspoken in his high regard for her po polykies. Tony, uh, Tony, Tony Blurt, 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 yeah. <laughs> man Thatch. Man Thatch. <laughs> yeah, the man Thatch. <laughs> Uh, so there you go. I rest my case. <laughs> Did you uh, shed a tear when Tony B. Lyre left the White House, the the uh, Brown House? 
<laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I did not. But that was one of the many momentous uh, things that happened in the year. And all through the show, we'll be going through the year. Uh, we've segmented it into themed portions, and we'll be discussing the highs and lows of the year. Look, I've, just, I've opened up a page here that's all about the Big British Castle, and it's entitled Auntie's Bloomers. Yeah. It's got a picture of uh, the Blue Peter set with socks on there. It was a tricky year for the Big British, car Big British Castle, of yeah. course. Uh, but we won't go into that. It's okay now because we, we've arrived. We're we've arrived. We've solved. We're going to fortify the whole castle. No one's going to be able to get in now. Everything's fine because we've got a defence plan. Uh, you know what? One of my favourite records of of this year, one of my favourite singles of this year, was one that we played uh, when we took over from Sean W. Keaveney on the Breakfast Breakfast Show. Yep. Uh, that was our first little bit of tenure here at uh, Six Music, and it's by Edwin Collins. Uh, it's called You'll Never Know, and we're going to play it right now. Well, it's one of the comebacks of the year, isn't it, for Collins? Absolutely. In every way. So, uh, enjoy. Edwin Collins with You'll Never Know My Love. Uh, one of my favourite singles of the year. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Uh, we hope you're drinking responsibly. Yeah. Uh, because let's not forget that 2007 has been the year when the government has decided to control various naughty things that the populace do, such as smoking indoors, mm. uh, drinking irresponsibly. Uh, those are the only two things I can think of. Uh, but uh, Fortress Britain. Fortress Britain. It's time for the, uh, the, the people of Britain to pull their socks up, stop messing about, stop being silly generally, uh, and, you know, just, just get in line a little bit more. But here's the thing. One day, folks, you're going to look back at 2007 and think we had it pretty good. Then we were we were still wandering around without I ID cards. Yeah, we could go pretty much wherever we wanted without being security checked and tagged. Yeah. And the police didn't wear gas masks. They didn't have those electric batons yet. Exactly. Uh, uh, they didn't instigate the 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 Judge Dread program, where uh, police could uh, issue death certificates mm -hmm. on the streets. Um, is that going to happen? That is going to happen. That's supposed to happen in 2000 AD, so they're a bit late on that one. Yeah, it's happening next year, I think. Is it? Uh, also, um, they're put the, the new parking meters mm. will kill you. That kill you, like they're, in Blade Runner. Exactly, yeah. they'll kill you. Um, uh, the other thing, of course, is that, you know, like these days, people, uh, grown-up people might say to you, do you remember when you could smoke on the tube? Mm. Do you remember when you could smoke on the bus? In the cinemas? Yeah, we Adam and I remember that from our childhoods. And uh, it seems like a distant memory from an ins from a world gone mad. That's right. And now people will, in the future, people will go, do you remember when you could smoke in restaurants? Hey, they'll say, do you remember when you could smoke? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Do you remember when people used to be free to make up their own minds about the choices they made? Thanks a lot, Tony yeah. Blair. But then, of course, you could come back with uh, Tony Belia. He was just protecting the, the people who were he dying was. from passive smoking. It's true, right? It's We're true. covering all the different aspects of this all debate. The different aspects. It's a very good Quite thing. Skillfully, I think. And <laughs> these these are all good things. <laughs> these are all very positive developments. Very positive. Uh, it's been a brilliant year for freedom, <laughs> all around the world. <laughs> Where do you get that from? I don't know. I'm just being positive. Okay. Uh, there've been a lot of very uh, well thought out wars, <laughs> uh, brilliantly planned uh, environmental interventions. You know, it's good to see the world really pulling its socks up and. Uh, you know, taking on global warming in a, in, in, in a united way. You love p pulling socks up, don't you? I, I just think everyone should pull their socks all the way up over their heads and then hop around like big, uh, boinging, dancing socks. So there we go. That's politics uh, <laughs> we've dealt with now from 2007. Who knows what we're going to be dealing with next? Here's, here's, here's a, a glimpse. It, oh. Uh, in the form of a, we can't tell you what's going to happen in the world next, but we're going to tell you a little something about what's going to happen on BBC Six Music next. Which is more important. Yeah, with this trail. Curtis Mayfield there with Superfly. This is Adam and Joe, BBC Six Music here on New Year's Eve, our exciting pre-New Year's Eve, uh, show. Uh, a show to take you up to 10 o'clock, of course. Then at 10 o'clock, we've got the Queens of Noise and all sorts of uh, insane party antics happening here on Six Music. So whatever you do, stay tuned. New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve. I love this song. Drinking all the way. <laughs> song. Oh, what fun it is, it is too, drunk too drunk until you're until very drunk. drunk. Oh, oh New words. Year's Eve, New yes. Year's Eve. I, I really hate like it so song. much. This Always in the wrong place on New Year's song. Eve. I love that song. I'm so pleased you sung it. Oh, it's New Year's Eve. I don't Eve. like this song. I hate oh, this song. Oh, it's New Year's this Eve. This is a bad song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that song stopped. I'm going to release that next year. Really? There's yeah, something to look forward to. Yeah. Because, oh, 
you know so what a year it's been listeners especially in the world of movies that's right uh the glamorous world where anything can happen where cgi effects rule the world uh actors like dame judy stench and helen mirrors do all the business with the wigs and it's a brilliant time it's to all go stench to and mirrors, isn't it? <laughs> it's all stench and mirrors uh in 2007 the cost of going to the cinema went up to four thousand pounds no way per maltese that's too much Four thousand pounds for each small each teaser. teaser, not Can even you a believe ticket. That? How much is a that ticket? That sounds made up, doesn't it? Isn't it? How much is a ticket to the a cinema? A ticket costs twenty thousand pounds. That's too much. It's too much, isn't it? Uh, unless you go in Peckham, where it costs ten pence. Ten p. But you will be killed. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> so the downside. So those are the two choices. Alternatively, of course, there's the world of high definition video, mm. uh, which arrived uh, with a with a flash and a and a and a, and a waz in 2007 uh and of course there was a terrible feud between blu-ray and hd and all sorts of conspiracy theories blu-ray ray charles ray davis they all had a big fight that's right against hd uh helen dick dickinson um is the woman who invented that and uh, anyway what what a year it's been for <laughs> movies it's been a year of threequels uh spider-man three didn't like it pirates of the spider-man 3 haven't seen it harry spider-man 3 liked it and spider shrek 3 uh disappointing disappointing ha and and ratatouille liked it liked it so i just said that i liked harry spider Sh shrek <laughs> you just made that also up. live three three mm. no die hard four was mm. out as well 300 it's all the threes it was all about threes uh, -huh. uh and also uh transformers 3 right that's not true that's it's not just true, the first one but there yeah. will be a third one um <laughs> but a lot of threequels uh some of them average and some of them poor For, uh, you know yeah. you've got to these days you've got to you've got to celebrate the average otherwise where would you be exactly exactly back, back in peckham thought park um where what was your favorite film this year my well that's hard to say go on uh, one, one of my it's because not that hard. because I don't Just really go, have one. Well, my favorite film was well, my favorite film was uh, David Fincher's Zodiac was one of them. Oh yeah, I enjoyed that very much indeed. I even forgot about that. I'm one. looking forward to the director's cut coming early in two oh two zero zero eight. Well, I'm looking forward to the sequel for that one. Yeah, uh, but we'll talk about forthcoming movies uh, a bit later. I also enjoyed Superbad. That was great. Uh, which ties in with uh, the song we just played, were it to be called Superbad rather than Superfly. You know, Superbad, uh, for the first time in a long time, I thought, what a great time to be a young person with these kind of movies. It's, it yeah. reminded me very much of the kind of things that we used to see when we were youngsters in the well, 80s. Well, John Apatow is, is a similar age to us, so yeah. he's sort of recreating that John Hughes era, but with a little more swearing and, and graphic references to lady parts. But a lot more heart as well, I thought, you know? Like, it's, it's sort of, he's got his cake and he's eating it there, and it's delicious cake because it's got all the filth and the mm -hmm. naughtiness that mm -hmm. uh, young people love but there's also a real nice you know feeling to the whole thing do you mm -hmm. know what i mean it's sure. not it's not sure. creepy and yeah absolutely like, uh, one of my favorite scenes of the year like pork was probably uh michael Sarah and jonah hill mm. declaring their love for each other at That's the end true. of Superbad. i thought that was very sweet anyway listen uh, it's time for a bit more music um oh no oh what, what's the matter what are we gonna play the b-52s yeah but not love shack i'm saying oh no because i just can't believe how good this is what's your problem with the b-52s uh, oh, nothing oh no i can't believe this is so good hit it B here's 52s. the b-52s with 52 girls this is a, a peach i picked this one i'm gonna beat joe up in a second for not liking it and being faintly dismissive i love it that's the B-52s with 52 Girls. This is Adam and Joe here on New Year's Eve 2007. We're with you for the next two and a half hours, but right now it's time for the news. The Chemical Brothers with Do It Again. They've done it again. Released another smashing record. <laughs> That's nice, man. You're already good at this radio thing. Thanks a lot, man. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. We're creeping closer to the all-important moment. Uh, if you're into... Uh, like rocks and stones and new age type things, then this is a very critical moment for you. Chakras. All your ley lines are intersecting, uh, various planets are aligning, uh, beams of light are shining through staffs of Ra and illuminating the place where you should be digging early in the new year mm. to find various grails or lost goblets. That's right, big underground caverns, the doors are preparing yep. to swing open. Cats, behaviours, uh, the behaviour of cats, sorry, I'll rephrase that, the behaviour of cats uh, is very important. You should write it down and take it to a witch, and she'll tell you what it means. <laughs> mm. All that sort of thing. It's all happening, is it? It's all going off. Are this you? is a very yeah. exciting period yeah. sure. in every sphere of life. You're absolutely sure? Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, we've done politics and films and cats. We've got lots more. What more do you want? We were talking in the, uh, in the music there, uh, just Joe and myself. We were dancing around, mm. uh, I tried to kiss Joe, he backed away, mm. um, and then we had a little bit of an awkward moment, but then after that, when the conversation got going again, mm. we started talking about the stupidest argument that you've had all year. <laughs> That's true, and, and, and that conversation was connected to our chatting about the year's movies, because one of the stupidest, uh, arguments I had this year, I very nearly fell out with a good friend of mine, because uh, he preferred Knocked Up to Superbad, and I much preferred Superbad to Knocked Up. Now, Superbad didn't make such a dent, did it, really? Came no. And went. No, in the UK it was released uh, concurrently with another film, maybe even Stardust or something, mm -hmm. and it was buried by Whimsical Fantasy. The swearing and boobs were overpowered by Whimsical Fantasy, and it kind of died a death. The two guys in it aren't as famous over here as they are over there. Right. Jonah and Seth. I can call them by their first names because they're friends of mine. Are they really? Not really, no. But yeah. I have met them a couple of times. Seth Brundle. Who's the guy, the young guy in it, who's uh, the, the, the sort of Michael main Sarah, the slightly weedy called. guy? Yeah, Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah. He's yeah. brilliant. What's he been in before? Uh, he has been in such films as... Uh, Michael Ju Sarah's story. Juno. <laughs> Juno. Uh, that's not out yet. Um, he's been in Arrested Development. He played George Michael in Arrested Development. That is, right. that's his best known role. Not the singer George Michael. No, no, no. Yeah. They're, they're in the joke. Right. But anyway, back to my argument. Mm. Uh, do you know that thing where you're very enthusiastic about a film, and by being enthusiastic, when you're enthusing about it to someone, you can almost see them not liking it. Right. Even though they haven't seen it. Yes. Because what's happening subtextually, if I may be so pretentious. Oh, I'd love you to be. Is that you, is, is that one's claiming the film as one's own. Right. And the other person goes, oh, it, it, it's like Joe's just licked that film all over. <laughs> well, you, I mean, both of us have had that as well. We don't like being the recipients of something that's been overhyped if we haven't seen it. No, I guess that, uh, I, I guess that kind of thing happens in, in a marketing sense as well. But, mm. but between two friends, if a friend of yours, uh, enthuses too much over an album or a film, it, it's like they've had a bite of the biscuit. It's a bit of a turn off. Like they've, you know, you know taking a little pop on it taking a little pop on it yeah had a little fiddle with it uh you don't want to bother with it you know sloppy <laughs> seconds yeah. that kind of thing anyway I'm this happened with me that. and uh and my friend and super bad <laughs> glad i said what sloppy seconds sloppy seconds is simply when you've uh taken a, a spoonful out of the dish of meringue <laughs> That's where the phrase comes from. And, and you've got meringue all and over And you're the face. second to take the meringue, and they've <laughs> merely made a bit of a mess of it. Uh, not a meringue, a fondue, or a blancmange. <laughs> or a mousse. A banana. A banana A banana. A banana. A banana spit. <laughs> That's nope. something else. And move on. on. Better play some music. No, quickly. no, no. I want to hear what? the end of the argument. Well, that's it. So, uh, <laughs> so I was really enthusing about Superbad. He went to see it. He came back with, with kind of a long face huh. and a slight look of disgust Ooh. in his eye as if he thought less of me for liking it. <clears throat> and then I sort of developed this idea that he was boring for not liking it. Because mm -hmm. in my mind, uh, Knocked Up is a fake subversive film. <laughs> it's supposed to be about, you know, uh, about anarchic, an anarchic guy who gets a woman pregnant. But actually, it's a bit like a modern version of the Steve Martin film Parenthood. Right. They're both lovely films, but it's actually a very conservative proposition. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's they're about always giving are, everything up yeah, and exactly. settling down. Whereas Superbad, uh, is, is genuinely quite like, uh, subversive and anarchic, I reckon. About, uh, male friendships and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, I've, but in, in saying this, I've taken it onto the level of a basic schism of political and, and lifestyle views, ideolo fundamental ideological views. <laughs> Uh, which, <laughs> that's, that's a fundamental, I, I, oh, God, let's New Year's record. Eve. <laughs> New Year's Eve. But you know what I mean? It became, I do, yeah. It became such a kind of heavy thing, it was more than disliking the film, it was like, I don't like you anymore. Oh, that's <laughs> horrible when that happens, man. It, it's sort of, we couldn't help it. Have you resolved it now? Oh, completely, yeah. Oh, good, I'm glad. Uh, incidentally, folks, if you haven't seen Superbad, you should, it's amazing, it's really a, a lovely yeah, film. Yeah, well, I'm sure it'll do very well on DVD, one to catch on DVD. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and here's a track, uh, that I've chosen for you, um, it's been played a lot to everywhere, and especially You've on Six Music. In a row. But have I? No, that was Chemical Brothers. I didn't choose that one. Yeah, you chose the B fifty twos though. Stop it, Willie. You got stuff coming up later. We I both better. got six. Oh, I do actually. I've got a good one. Yeah, coming yeah. Up. Anyway, this is one of the albums of the year. I'm not sure it was released this year, though, was it? It came out, yeah, in 2006, and it was sort of re-released and did very well. Uh, some people write them off as a kind of uh, Bruce Springsteen tribute act. Sir, Bruce Springsteen tribute act. I don't care because they're good. This is the Hold Steady with Stuck Between Stations. <laughs> as I saw Bruce Springsteen tribute band to me. <laughs> uh, that was the whole steady with Stuck Between Stations. You know, you'd have to be some kind of churl to not even get a little bit of pleasure out of that. Come on. 
Go oh, on then. What? I got a little bit of pleasure about uh, uh, out of that. About of that. Yeah, that's very decent of you. This is Adam and Joe, BBC Six Music. Happy New Year's Eve, listeners. We hope you're drinking moderately. Yeah. Uh, being nice to everybody around you. Hey, can I give you some practical advice, listeners? And you yes. too, Joe Cornish. Yes. Uh, have a glass of water right now. Hydrate yourself. Hydrate yourself. Yeah. Pull it back. Yeah. Just pull it back. Pull it back for a couple of hours. You can get going again a bit later in the night. You won't regret it. Then you'll be in good shape. Mm. You'll feel less bad tomorrow morning. Think about how you're going to feel tomorrow morning. You know what? We're assuming that everybody's in a kind of a crazy party mood, but according to statistics that I've just uh, formulated, I, I made during that song I made a thousand phone calls. Did you? And I've drawn up some percentages. Mm. Uh, and apparently, sixty-three percent of people really don't bother on New Year's Eve. Right. Uh, they're tired. They're partied out. They just have a bit of an early night, uh, maybe a little drink with a close friend. And just take it easy. They might do some praying. Yeah. Uh, maybe they don't agree. No. Uh, maybe they don't even drink. You know, they maybe might they just... don't drink. They might have a cup of Yeah, cocoa. this awful lump and cliche that everyone's getting drunk and, and making a mess of themselves is an awful lump and cliche. It is. A, oh, it's what a lump. What an awful lump and cliche. Look at the size of it. Look at the size of it. <laughs> and it's not backed up by those statistics that I <laughs> recently <laughs> made, <laughs> made just up. Invented. But, you know, I usually just have, a, have quite a quiet time. Yes. No, that's generally what I'll do. I'll come back from church and mm. uh, I'll uh, kneel down and I'll mm. pray to a You'll selection put on of... on your... That shirt with the spikes on the inside. That's right. Mm. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll pray to a selection of gods and then I will uh, write... Cadbury's gods. Yeah. Mm. I'll, I'll do some writing. I'll write a couple of poems. This is... Uh, I'm not doing it tonight because we're doing the show. Uh, but this is what I would normally do on New Year's Eve. And mm. then I'll have a, a half a glass of tea really yes and then after that i'll lie down on a person <laughs> <laughs> which way up will you be the wrong way round <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> oh i see with your feet on their head no my head on their feet your head on the that's the same is it yeah <laughs> <laughs> who is this person I can't tell you. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Is it David Cameron? It is David I Cameron. Think it is, isn't it? You <laughs> love David Cameron. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I'm saying this as if I've got something to move on to. After this, I want to chat a little bit about some more of the events of last year. Um, uh, especially, you know, uh, Jay Goody and the Big Brother thing. I think we should, you know, because obviously it's been talked about and dissected endlessly, but I really think the public need to hear our opinions on the subject. Okay. So after this, which is uh, our producer Jude's favourite single of the year, is that right, Jude? Yes. This is Of Montreal with Suffer for Fashion. There we go. Oh, that was an abrupt ending. It was a little uh, abrupt there. The band are called Of Montreal. How very rude. The song's called Suffer for Fashion. It's our producer Jude's favourite record of the year. She's obsessed with those people. She loves that She cannot guy. stop going on about them. Favourite gig of the year, on, she said on, as well. On. We'll talk about favourite gigs of the year in a second, but first, Joe Cornish, I don't know if you know this, but there's been a massive race row. What? On the programme Big Brother. It, that seems like a thousand years ago. Doesn't you it? know, I wish it was. <laughs> yeah. Did you watch that show in the end, the uh, whole Jade thing? Uh, yeah, I watched the race row, but that, that was it. Then I drew a, I've drawn a line under Big Brother in, in life in general. Yeah. I will, I, I hereby promise that what was I the... will never watch it ever again. What was your little epiphany there that, uh, stopped you? Just you used to like those just had enough you know if you eat one sort of food mm. uh like if you ate wagon wheels non-stop for a week oh, I've you, done that. you probably wouldn't be able to eat them again right well you could do a documentary about it i love morgan spurlock Mer style there's he, another yeah. thing to talk about right later remind me about that okay but, i'm writing uh, it down <clears> in the minutes <throat> but you know i'm just i'm sick of it absolutely and i think it's about it. time that channel dropped that show i think it's killing them but people like the show only idiots no man wait whoa no, wait I, hey, whoa. I, 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 I no insult to people I, i'm not saying you're an out and out idiot if yeah. you watch big brother but certainly for the time that you're watching big brother or talking about it you are an idiot now listen and i think the people that watch that are, are heat magazine readers and i think uh, he's they're going for broke i'm going for broke i just think that kind of thing's over i think it's yesterday's news i think it was brilliant about three years ago four years ago it felt new and exciting and interesting mm. now it's time to move on but it's not just the novelty man i know what you're saying there's times when you watch those mm. things it's mm. totally mm. unedifying and you mm. feel dragged mm. down into the dirty dirty place mm. but occasionally not so much with the whole shilpa jade thing because it was a kind of insane hysterical construct about her being racist she, she's mainly just daft not so much racist but the whole racism thing is out of control in lots of different ways anyway but uh Ooh. the previous year um the whole barrymore one and the george galloway thing 
that you couldn't have written that stuff, man. Hey, that, that was, was previous, yeah. That was like a play, uh, uh, amazing play. And sometimes you watch those things, and it it really is uh, an incredible insight into what makes people human that you don't get anywhere else, really. Mm. Um, yeah, you may be right. I'm just saying personally, you know, Ed, from my point of view, at the yeah. end of the day, when all said and done, yeah, Joe, yeah, 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 um, sport, sport, is that I've. Uh, I've, I think I've seen it all. I've had enough. You've had enough. enough. Oh, my so lordy. Well, listen, you've got your wishes because they're not going to do something. Yeah, it's coming back brother. in the blooming summer. In fact, that's one of the nice things about the beginning of this year. You don't have that terrible thing where you start the year, there's a sort of vacuum of boredom, and mm. there to fill it is blooming big it's brother. Celebrity pretty big brother. I used it's to not love on this that. year. I hate it. They're not doing it. Anyway, music time after that ranting. It's uh, a trail. It's a trail time. And it's all about Sergeant Pepper. I don't know what possibly could there be left to say about Sergeant Pepper that hasn't been said. We're going to find out right now. Fly the Family Stone with Dance to the Music here on BBC Six Music. Uh, it's New Year's Eve. Uh, it's very exciting for everybody, whether you're celebrating or not, isn't it? Yeah, only about four more hours to go now. Just less than four more hours until New Year's Eve, the big moment. You might get to snog someone. Really? Yeah. I haven't snogged somebody for years. You might get to. If you're in the right place at the right time, everyone will be kissing each other and you can just take advantage. Wow. You know, you just let it last a little bit too long and bang, you're in there. Because generally, that's the time of year where you could legitimately go for the mouth rather than the cheek. Don't you think? That well, sometimes who, what, happens. Who, what? This is a disturbing scenario because... Uh, I, this is, I, no, listen, I'm not going to be with you, you on you're, New Year's Eve. Uh, you're standing around, you're in a room, there's maybe four girls there, four blokes, uh, they could, just assume that everybody's paired off already, right? Maybe married couples yeah. in there, long, long relationships and things. There's no, uh, singletons drifting around, but you all know each other very well. The clock strikes 12, everyone starts kissing each other, but they, but it's like you're really good friends, you've known each other for years. Some of the girls, might think it's acceptable to go for a little kiss on the lips there. Do you need to talk about your marriage? Well, marriage is a wonderful thing, and I uh, enjoy being married more than almost anyone in the world. Mm. But still, a little random kiss on the lips there at New Year's Eve might be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you thinking about? <laughs> Who are you thinking about? My best Maybe friend. Maybe Matthews. <laughs> no, my wife's best friend and her sister no i'm not, I'm not. <laughs> wow it's going to be fireworks uh, for new Matthews. year's eve at the buxton household <laughs> yeah. that's for sure listen she's going to be trying to get some snogging action off my more hunkier friends anyway so it's all it's, it's all a bit bit of a disaster isn't it listen, really I painted and, a no, picture it's lovely it's lovely it's, it's like it's like the 60s the 70s it's right. like the ice storm it's not like the it's ice brilliant. storm i knew you were gonna say it's that. brilliant yeah we all pop the keys in the bowl yeah. there and then uh go off of course i'm drive. i'm just in a long-term relationship i'm too cowardly to get married because i just like to entertain the idea that anything's possible mm, so in a way I'm, I'm living in more of a fantasy yeah. land than than you are wow. if, if such a thing is possible listeners you've got a double slice of truth cake there yeah wow that's lucky and we, there was some irony icing on top of it but mainly it was the ingredients were truth <laughs> i wonder what david bowie's doing uh, on new year's eve that's a good uh, that's an i wonder what david david <laughs> david does he probably does something superlative uh, i do something superlative uh, on new year's eve with a little bit of that? theatricality with and a little they, bit of theatricality and they probably uh, yes and uh they probably do amazing sh charades but charades for david bowie's of amazing work. at charades mm. he can do the accused without making it filthy libelous. exactly but they probably do like jacques brel songs and stuff as it's as true subjects. him and iman is he still married to iman very much so yes and he probably has joey bowie around is, joey? It, is it zoe or is it it's, joey? it's joey these days it's joey and joey's around there yes i've met him iman's got many children when have you met joey i met him in the video shop do Ooh. you remember that story yes, I yeah, do remember. yeah, yeah. Tell, tell it again. i can't i can't really remember what happened oh. but i didn't find out he was bowie's son until after i'd spoken to him oh my gosh he was telling me he w he made short films right yeah can you imagine what kind of short films can it? you imagine what kind of short films <laughs> My son makes. <laughs> la, la, oh, oh. Uh, here is some David Bowie. Anyway, oh, it's a reason for this terrible, nicely, isn't it? This terrible uh, uh, Im impression fest. Uh, this is uh, David Bowie's um, song. What is called Moon Age Daydream. Did you know he did this song by cutting up words and rearranging them on a board? Like cutting up words and rearranging them. <laughs> this sounds like someone else. <laughs> David, uh, here we go. Know. Here's some David Bowie. David Bowie with Moon Age Daydream. Uh, and we are nearly entering the moon age 
Hmm. 2008. 2008. What is the short, short term for 2000 and, oh no, we had the noughties, didn't we? I'm just talking rubbish. Adam. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the noughties. We're not out of the noughties yet. Th What's there's it? no there's no shortism for the actual individual year, is there? No. no like what? Going mad. What shortisms have there been for any year? Let's not delay this. Let's not prolong this. Oh. Just pick up another subject. <laughs> Go on, bang. You f you forgot about Hot Fuzz in your movies of the year. That's true. Uh, Hot Fuzz. Oh, Hot Fuzz for us is is more than a film. It was sort of a way of life for a bit, wasn't it, Adam? Because mm. Adam was in it, of course, and I did loads of um, stuff behind the scenes and stuff. Where and, can people uh, find your documentary, Joe Cornish? Uh, on uh actually only on the american versions of hot fuzz right on the on the american dvd or the american three disc dvd uh mm -hmm. is my documentary but of course i was writing a script with edgar so i was with them um when they toured america earlier this year good times they were good times that was fun man and it was one of the most successful uh certainly homegrown movies of the year it certainly was it made about 20 uh 20 grand in the uk unfortunately beaten by the infinitely superior mr bean's holiday 20 million even uh 20 million i'm sorry i believe mr bean made about 22 million that's right uh which makes it too better than hot fuzz yeah 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 which Notes, is uh, uh, have you seen either of those films you've seen I hot have, fuzz obviously i have seen hot fuzz i haven't have you seen, seen mr bean's holiday i haven't seen the holiday of yeah the bean. it's it's almost scandalous that it's uh that it's more successful well there's a lesson there of some kind isn't there it's for the little kids it's for the little the kids money's in the under tens and for the bean people yeah. and there are many bean people around it does it does bean people the the bean man does he speak in english in this one yes he says bean 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 yeah and he doesn't do any other talking he says can <laughs> can <laughs> What? Can. Can? Yeah, because he's trying to get to the Can Film Festival. Oh, I That's see. the plot. So he says, Can. Right. He has trouble speaking. It's the international language of uh, humorous, uh, rubbery faces, though, isn't it? That's why it's so popular, because it doesn't yeah. exclude anyone except, uh, of course, comedy yeah. fans. Um, but there's notes. I mean, you can be snobby about being. You can be snobby. It's easy to be I'd snobby. Like, I'd tell you a good little prank to do. What? If we were still in the prank game. Yeah. I'd dress you up as Mr. Bean. <laughs> I'd hide a camera. And I'd have you attempt to do some of the things Mr. Bean does. Right. Make friends with uh, a small boy he doesn't know. Uh, you know, cause trouble in a restaurant with lobsters. And see what the genuine public reaction would be. Right. Uh, I, I warrant it wouldn't be charm and, and mild amusement. It would be... Arresting. Police intervention. <laughs> Instant police and intervention. And arresting. Uh, Notes on a Scandal was also a big uh, UK-based hit, or yeah. UK-produced hit. You weren't such a fan of the Scandal Notes, were you? Uh, I thought it was a bit overcooked. I quite overbaked. Liked, oh, I enjoyed I, watching it. I enjoy my uh, films overcooked. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> yeah. Ex you like them with a, a well burnt, done. burnt edges. Yeah. I thought it was nice. I mean, it's mainly because I've got a fixation about Cake Blanket. She's Cake just... Blanket. She's adorable. She's adorable. And some of, of course, the... I was in a scene with her in uh, in Hot Fuzz. That's right. <laughs> Kate and I have acted together. Cake Blanket was in Hot Fuzz, if you don't know this already, folks, but she was disguised heavily, you know, she played Simon Pegg's girlfriend in the yeah, film. Yeah, she was a CSI officer, so she had a mask on. She was disguised. But the eyes gave it away. She's got beautiful elven eyes, as oh featured in the Lord of the Rings gosh, trilogy. She's Oh, I would very be... I'd be happy with... Yeah. Some cake time some new year's eve some blank naughty action, action. <laughs> <laughs> right now more music uh would you like a disco classic joe cornish oh yes please here's donna summer then for you <laughs> i'm giorgio Maroda. welcome <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Giorgio. That's Donna Summer with I Feel Love. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music on New Year's Eve. The most exciting night of the day. It's the most exciting night. Most exciting night of the day. The most exciting night. Which isn't saying much, because, of course, there's only one night per day. Of the day. So it's going to be exciting, isn't it? Yes. Um, now, we were just talking in the break there about... Um, uh, the films again that we've seen this year. Obviously, we're going to be focusing heavily on the pop cultural aspect of the uh, last year because uh, that's what we tend to occupy ourselves with. But um, Joe was talking about one of his favourite films, uh, A Good Year, the Ridley Scott yeah. film. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. Was it's, that this year? Yeah, it was. Uh, and, and you know, listeners, it, I wouldn't say it's one of the be you know one of the non-ironically best films of the year, <laughs> but but it, in in terms of uh, a sort of dazzling mess of you know <laughs> it's almost like a good year you've sort of got to see it at the cinema i saw it at the empire leicester square sitting two rows behind me was was john prescott mm -hmm. i tell you that before looking yeah. very grumpy 
Um, and the thing about it is it's like being invited to Provence for a couple of hours uh, where you uh, spend your time in the most incredible country house mm-hmm. uh, with the beautiful surroundings, uh, a beautiful lady called Abby Cornish, no relation, but a sexy young Australian lady, and Russell Crowe making a complete tit of himself. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's an awful awful business, <laughs> terrible story, <laughs> embarrassing, uh, cringe making, awful series of disastrous scenes, uh, <laughs> but so beautifully rendered and so lovelily uh, presented that it's sort of like you know a fantastic holiday with a mad uncle who leaves <laughs> before you get bored of him. It was so strange though I mean? that it was you know it's the team obviously that brought you Gladiator, Ridley yeah, Scott, and Russell Crowe. Macho obviously self-consciously trying something totally different well you know the common factor with a lot of bad films made by good people is beautiful locations yeah often set in the bahamas or hawaii or you know you always know you're onto a stinker yeah. when they're set somewhere that's provided a lovely holiday right for the crew yeah and you know they're having a better time behind the camera than they are in front and indeed that was the business with a good year you know i think ridley even shot it at his own house oh, or something he made very little effort he would have just been drinking cognac with russell and eyeing up abby cornish's baton having a wicked time and yeah getting the shots in the can as quickly and efficiently as possible uh and that sort of thing he works so hard riddles man he riddles, just in this year so riddles he's, he's a national got, treasure uh, a good year he went straight on to american gangster while he was doing american mm, gangster mm. he was sorting out the new version of blade runner mm. and doing that incredibly thorough and detailed um stuff we were talking about the blade runner special edition a few weeks ago on this program but i've been watching even more of it since then i mean it's the gift that keeps on giving that stuff if you're in any way fond of that film you must just get the full massive 200 disc set because it's got mm. some incredible mm. stuff but one bit did you check out the bit joe when they've because you know the new version of this film which ridley says will be the last the final cut of blade runner riddles. contains some little fixes uh digital fixes on a few of the effects that he was frustrated about riddle fix it and riddle fix it and one of the uh, the riddles that uh, riddle fixed was um a scene where harrison ford is talking to some uh snake dealer in a market kind yes. of thing and the scene through a window yeah and and the lips were notoriously out of sync with the dialogue yeah. um but he's so he's fixed that and here's how he fixed it they got harrison ford's son who is now the same age as harrison would have been when he played the part of deckard huh. and they put him against a, a a green screen and got him to loop the lines uh and lip sync them but it's amazing because although harrison ford son looks a little bit like i mean quite a lot like him obviously he's not an exact match but his lips his mouth are exactly right and they put on the scar as well harrison really? Ford's but scar. it's all seen through a sort of dusty window isn't it yeah Ob- obfusked Exactly. Can I say that word? You can. I like I it did. when you say that word. And but, and they uh, matched his lips in there and everything with wow. his son. You know, I I, I I didn't even notice that. It I was, was amazed that it was, uh, uh, you know, it worked and it, they were all talking proper, but I didn't know they'd done that. That's amazing. I love riddles. Extraordinary business. Here's a bit more music now. Uh, I picked this one for you listeners. Yeah. This is a band, um, a sort of offshoot from one of my favourite bands, Talking Heads, and this is the Tom Tom Club with Genius of Love. <laughs> There you go, Genius of Love. Hope you enjoyed that one. This is Adam and Joe here on New Year's Eve 2007. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't believe it. Uh, but right now, here is the news. The news just doesn't stop just because it's New Year's Eve, right? The news is happening all the time and here's more. The Klaxons with Golden Scans. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. A very happy New Year's Eve to everybody. Hey, I'd just like to wish everyone who listens to our show and everybody who listens to Six Music, um, a very happy birthday. What, what are you talking about? No, I meant a very happy uh, New Year. Oh, right. That yeah. makes a bit more sense. Yeah. So we've been talking about movies in 2007, and of course there's lots of exciting movies to look forward to in 2008. Mm. I'm going to just list some of them to wet your uh, movie tight. Oh. Uh, Indiana Jones 4. <gasps> is that coming out next year? Yeah, it's March, is it? Or May? I think it's May. That's got to be rubbish. No, surely. it's got to be good. Surely rubbish. Come on, anything who's with Harrison. Who's the young protagonist? Uh, sh- uh, Shia Le- Le Boeuf. It's Le Boeuf. For Shia Le Could the please have a slice of Le Boeuf? Oh, this is delicious. Is uh, he yeah. in there, is he? It's him, the blanket's in there. Catherine Blanket. Cake Blanket. Is in there. Ray Winstones is oh in there. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and Harrison Please Ford. tell me Ray Winstones is not doing his American accent. Uh, I will slay your monster. I will slay your monster. No, I don't think he is. <clears throat> the Sex in the City movie, that's something for ladies to look oh, forward to. Oh, no. Yeah, that's not going to be any good, is it? No. Uh, the By Happening. No means. M. Night Shyamalama Lama Ram's uh, new film, The Happening. What's the twist? Well, the twist is that it isn't. It's got no twist. No, it just isn't. Oh. Well, I can't tell you what is, because that would be giving it away. What? 
The happening's about when plants take revenge on humanity. Oh, Dave the Triffords. A little like Dave the Triffords. Oh. Hellboy 2. Hellboy 2. Speed Racer. Is Hellboy 2 the same uh, director? Yeah, it's Guillermo del Toro. Oh, well, that'll be interesting. He though. made Pan's Labyrinth, you yeah, know, he's, yeah, a, he's yeah. a good one. Speed Racer by the Waka 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 Wachowski Brothers. The Wachowski Brothers. Yeah. What's Speed Racer there? Is that the cartoon? Yeah, or the, oh. yeah, yeah. It's a kind of hyperkinetic, uh, live action, digital, multicolored, fake, fake fest. That does not sound appealing. Get Smart. With Steve Carell. Da, 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 yeah. Da, that wasn't a big uh, show for British Not people. Not over here, but it was, was it? over in America. Yeah. Uh, the Smurfs movie. Oh, you're joking I'm now, not aren't joking. You? Are you joking? No, a three-dimensional CG rendered Smurf movie. Your kids, Adam, will be loving that. Uh, they pretty much won't. Ba, 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 I'm sure ba. they won't. Oh, Sweeney Lord. Todd. Sweeney starring Johnny Todd. Depp with Sweeney. <laughs> the Demon Barber of... Where? Oh, Sweeney Street. Todd the Barber. We could I tell the tale barber. of Sweeney Todd. He served a dark and a hungry god. <laughs> yeah, I love Sweeney, that. I yeah. love Sweeney Todd. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I don't think it's entirely the Sondheim musical, but it's 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 a few Sondheim uh, songs and then some new ones. Right. Johnny Depp singing. Uh, what's she called? Claire Barnett. Uh, Debbie O. Mags. Yeah. What's she called? Philip Philip Phyllis O. Potato. Sack. I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> uh, None. Tim Burton's wife. Oh, <laughs> Helena Bonham Carter. Janine yeah. Potato Sack. <laughs> Janine <laughs> Potato Sack. She's in it, uh, doing the, doing the, doing the East End accent. Don't do it, Sweeney. Don't slice his throat for the pies. You have us in the nick. <laughs> yeah, it's Russell Brand. That kind of thing. Yeah, he should be in it. Uh, having modelled himself on Edward Scissorhands, of course. Well, exactly. He's kind of like a weird one. Of and the, it's directed by Burton, is it? Burton, yeah. Oh, Burton's menswear. Harold and Kumar 2. <laughs> Harold and Kumar yeah. 2. Thank goodness. The wait is over. Rambo 4. No. Yeah, get with it. Stallone, he's yeah, back again. Stallone. It's very good. The trailer for Rambo 4 is very good. He's, What's the uh, premise? The premise is he's living in the jungle. Uh, some kind of uh, liberal do-gooders pass through his jungle camp yeah. uh, t to try and rescue somebody from some band of gorillas. Right. Don't do it. You will die. And they ignore him and they go in and they try and rescue them and, and Rambo has to go in and save them. And, mm. and in the trailer, he kills about 50 people. Does he? he? Slices their heads off. Not do good as though. He's not killing do good. No, no, he? he's killing the baddies. Right. Cloverfield. What's Cloverfield? Uh, or, or, aka Monstrous. It's about a big creature that, uh, that stamps all over New York and it knocks the head off the Statue of Liberty. That's a strange title yeah, for J. a J. film. Yeah, JJ Abraham's produced. Are you very out of touch, Adam? It, it's all the new, it's all the rage on the internet. Cloverfield. Cloverfield. Yeah, there's a trailer. Oh, the, the twist is it's all shot from Handycam. It's like a sort of high-budget Blair Witch, but instead of a witch, it's it's like New York yuppies at a party when a massive monster invades New York. Ooh. <clears throat> That's supposed to be quite good. People That's are very excited about that. Narnia 2. Narnia the Chronicles 2. of Banania. Oh, my lord. The new one from Pixar, Wall-E. Oh. kind of looks a bit like Short Circuit. All very again, excited about that. Had a trailer yeah. for that before Ratatouille. Oh, Ratatouille, yeah. I was very excited. Remake of Footloose? No. Yeah, they're remaking Footloose. Who's in that? Don't know. Oh. Bond 22, new Bond film. Bond 20. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm up for that. We like Craig Charles yeah. playing, he's reinvented the role of Bond. The funky Bond bunker. Yeah. <laughs> Iron, Iron Man. Iron Man, that's gonna be that's good, gonna isn't be it? That's gonna be good, good cast. Who's, who's directing that? Uh, that's directed by John Favreau. Uh, no. Yeah, who done, uh, the brilliant, what was it called? Elf. Like the House in Space, yeah, Elf and, um, Z Z Z Zathura, oh, Zathura, Zathura yeah. Zathura, whatever it's called. Uh, The Dark Knight, the new Batman film. Oh. Yeah, directed by Christopher Nolan. That's great. With, uh, Christopher Bale, Timothy Bale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's he called? John Bale. <laughs> John Bale. Christian. Christian Bale. Oh, you know what? I saw, uh... uh Michael Keaton. Is he in And Jack that? Nicholson. And Prince <laughs> doing the song. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> That's the old one, isn't it? Um, you know, I saw that Christian Bale film, Rescue Dawn, the other day. Yeah, it's a bit of a disappointment. It is a little If bit. you've seen the original documentary, Little Dieter Needs to Fly. Ooh, I'd like to see that. Which is the actual guy, right, uh, talking you through his story in the actual locations. It's a bit nuts, though. I was, I yeah. was a bit let hey, down. Hey, if you don't know what we're talking about, don't worry. Don't worry about it. Yeah, if you do, then that would have been a bit interesting. That's it for film news for the time being. Uh, now, here is an exciting new sound for you, Joe. This is a man, mm. a Frenchman, he's from France, and yes. he has harnessed the power of the synthesizer motorboat the motorboat synthesizer does he have a motorboat yes he does he's got three motorboat and he makes a record using computers and the robot called johnny face and that's <laughs> who he used for this one it's called equinox five and it is made by jean michel jarre enjoy here's the thunder can you hear the thunder shush shush can you hear the thunder Oh. Yes, yeah, that's it. What's it? 
the music will sound like in the future. Wow. When it's, was that when was that recorded? Uh, it is not yet recorded. It's made really? it is being made in the future. It was it and was it was beamed back by yes. um there's so man I have him he goes forward in the future, he steals music and he sends it back to me. Motorboat. 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 <laughs> Nail tower bell. That was Jean Michel Jarre. Uh, this is uh, Adam and Joe on, on BBC Six Music. Uh, we're drawing ever closer to a brand new year, and it's time for many people to make a clean start. Mm. Young offenders, uh, people who've been trouble, people who've been in trouble with the law, mm. uh, people who've just had an, a frightful time. Amy Winehouse. Yeah. Pete Doherty. Uh, Carl Barat. No, actually, he's fine, isn't he? But, but Amy Winehouse's dirty spouse. Right. The dirty spouse of Amy Winehouse. It's time for British sportsmen to make a fresh start. Because Adam and I know nothing about sport. No. But there's one thing I do know. 2007 was a disastrous year. Was it? England had been knocked out of almost all major, uh, what's the word they use? Sports. Sports. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next year. And, you know, it's disturbing for me because I like to do my shopping when major sporting events are happening because yeah. the shops are empty. That's true. And all the sport billies are going to be all over the place next year with nothing to do. Right. Like, 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 you know, confused people. Oh, yes. I didn't know. I thought England had won some cricket earlier on, didn't they, last year? And wasn't that the year before? Oh, it might have yeah, been the year yeah. before. I, like, everyone was celebrating for a bit. Oh, because they thought they were going to do well in the rugby, Yeah, didn't that's they? the thing, you know, s English sports fans, just don't get, fan, there's only one of you, don't get so excited. Right. Because it's that very excitement that ruins it. <laughs> yeah, the Henman factor, they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, if we just assumed we're going to lose, then we might win. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you hear pundits getting excited about Britain's chances, you know it's hopeless. That's why we have to celebrate people like Eddie the Eagle. You're very dismissive <laughs> of that, <laughs> though, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. The cult of the loser. The cult of the underdog. <laughs> um, anyway, that's our sports section for sports, sports news. fans. We do one a year. <laughs> that's this year's. And we'll do another one at the end of next year. Sports news. Um, now, we're going to move this. Well, this is just going to be a short link for you folks, okay? Because we want to keep the party happening. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you, are you going to be dancing with anyone at the party tonight, Joe? Uh, well, you know, tonight I'm going to be at the, the Royal Festival Hall, uh, seeing the super furry animals, and they're, they're going to take over the whole place with all sorts of, uh, bits and bobs. And yeah, hopefully, who knows? Are you I'm, more excited about the... I'm planning to get wrecked. Are you? Yeah. Is it going to be the bobs or the bits that are going to get you most excited? <laughs> uh i i intend to bob the bits. Right. And, and will you dance? Do you dance? I can't bobbing. remember if you dance or not. I dance yeah i dance you i'm, and I, I'm a big we, fella though yeah i'm like a kind of a squid spinning on a stick what sort of if you could compare your dancing style to a well-known uh, dance type person who would that be uh it would probably be jamiroquai would it be yeah um like if, in the if, virtual if he's insanity had a video. son with mr tickle <laughs> right and that i would be that son and if he was dancing um but but couldn't yeah uh, that would be it. I'm like a kind of midget Sean Ryder. No, like a, like a Short like people bears. are lucky, man. You're, I'm not saying you're short, but people of, uh, average, average, uh, height <laughs> are lucky because they can dance badly, but no one will see them. If you're tall, yeah. uh, there's no hiding. Right, I just shuffle from foot to foot. I do the, the sort of Bez thing, except with mm. the, without the maracas. Mm. And I'll be doing, doing it to this song right now, folks. Doing, Here's a little doing. blast from, uh, the end of the 80s. My gosh, it's amazing to think this is the end of the 80s. There you go. Fool's Gold by the Stone Roses. It's Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music, uh, celebrating the year 2007, the year that's behind us, the year that's gone. Mm. Uh, an exciting year for us because it's when we started here on BBC Six Music, quite late in the year, wasn't it? It was, yeah, it was very late. In a way, that this year's been a kind of warm-up for us. Mm. And we're just getting into our stride. Towards the end of next year, we're really going to be in our stride. Uh, I think we will have boiled off by the end of next year. You reckon? Yeah, we'll have a kind of a, a, a peak for a weekend, possibly mid-summer when everyone's on holiday. Yeah. No one will hear it. By then... But, then it'll but, go downhill. Right. Um, or one of us will have been fired. We will have put our foots in it somehow. Said something uh, either... Our foots? Yeah. Mm. Feats... Uh, the feats will be put in the it, and but maybe something very, very racist, or something really disgusting. You'll say. Yeah, both of us, probably. Or maybe just something disgust, like, really sexy. But <laughs> really, that's so arousing. Yeah. It'll be banned. They will, it'll be banned. So it won't actually be rude or explicit, but it'll be just such a sort of sexy... Arousing. ...thought. Yeah. Like what I said about the moose <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I think we may have done that with oh, the moose. moose. 
<laughs> you're also talking about Blade Runner. You, Joe was saying in that well after we were talking about Blade Runner. Hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, you can think during this song. Think about how you might phrase that in a clean way. All right. Uh, this is a, a obscure nugget from the past. It's by a group called the Mob. Uh, this is a great track. It's called I Dig Everything About You. That's the Mob with I Dig Everything About You. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music uh, on New Year's Eve. And just to uh, uh, fill you in, in case you're wondering, folks. It wasn't that dirty, what we were talking about before about Blade Runner. Joe was just saying he wouldn't mind getting involved in a little sandwich between Sean Young and Harrison Ford in their tryst there. There's a deleted dirty scene on on the Blade Runner Special Edition DVD. Uh, and yeah, I, I just like A little it. replicant sandwich. Yeah, with some exactly. <laughs> hey, one of the funniest bits, not to dwell on this Blade Runner thing, but one of the funniest outtakes on that DVD is uh, all the different endings. Obviously, they had a big problem with the ending. The studio didn't like it being downbeat. That's right. Uh, so they shot this thing with uh, uh, with Deckard and um, what she called? Rachel is the robot. Yeah, Rachel in, in their little hover car, their little spinner, zipping off into the lovely um, countryside. Going for a dirty week. Going, going for a dirty Well, kind of getting away. Yeah. And they've got all sorts of alternative exchanges between them. And the worst one, because, of course, one of the most uh, famous kind of unresolved things is, is he a replicant? Right. So this, this ending that they didn't use kind of gives it away. She turns to him and goes, I guess we're made for each other. That's right. And then they give each other a very long pregnant pause, just in case you don't get the resonance of that statement. Yeah. Made for. Yes. By a robot-making man. man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, that's enough Blade Runner stuff. Uh, let's keep the music flowing, shall we? Keep the music flowing. What have we got now, Joe Cornish? Uh, we've got Ike and Tina Turner Corner with River Deep, Mountain High. Mmm, that's the clash. Should I stay or should I go? That was the point at which a lot of Clash fans were beginning to think, I don't know, you know, I just don't know. And then it was on that commercial, the jeans commercial. Do you remember that? Yeah. And then everyone else started thinking, oh, I just, oh, I don't know I don't about know that. Either. I just don't know. Uh, but I always liked it. thought it was quite good. Quite wicked. Hey, this is Adam and Joe here. Three hours, less than three hours to go. Oh, my gosh. Before the b the bongs start belling. The big and bong. The, the big bongs. And the bong gets passed around. And then Terry Wogan uh, explodes. And uh, all the dust starts falling down from the shelves. And uh, fireworks go off. Fireworks are one of the best aspects of New Year. What's the, are they having like a big display in yeah in London Town this yes, year? Yes, they are uh, having a big display on the Thames. That's nice. It's the Zamba Frenchman. Oh, it is the damn yeah, French I fireworks. Think so. It's the amazing French guy. What did the? Uh, I might be talking out of my mm. uh, lower hole. Your colon. But um, the guy that did the amazing Sydney Millennium ones. I right. think he's a French fellow, and he's doing them on the Thames. And I. In my, from my vantage point in the Royal Festival Hall, we'll have an extraordinarily good view. I thought you were going to say, I am setting them off <laughs> and giving a short speech. <laughs> and now, Joe Cornish from Six Music's Adam and Joe radio show will set off the fireworks after this short speech. Go! London, 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 I, I, Joe, Joe Cornish, command you all to dance! <laughs> <laughs> That'll be it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the fireworks going on. <laughs> yeah, brilliant stuff there. What a brilliant fantasy. If only that could happen. Yeah. Not only I, but everyone would be really happy. They would be amazed. Yeah. Oh, it's never got better than... You're going to talk about something proper. Well, I was going to talk about the uh, social networking phenomenon, Facebook, of course, which... Uh, One of the major phenomenons of, of the year gone. Yeah, absolutely. About to have gone. Uh, you're not a Facebook person, are you? Uh, no, I'm a MySpace person. MySpace. And that's something that happened to me this year. I got a MySpace space page. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, www.myspace.com forward slash Joe Cornish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I've got about, about 1,200 friends. That's you've got a lot of many, friends on it? there. It's not very many, comparatively that's, speaking. That's good, man. Well, I, I mean... bands that are low in the charts that have 50,000. No. Yeah. Well, that's just madness, though. Yeah. I mean, that's well, all, it, all it is is like a sort of online flyer when you get to that many. You know, it's just a way of telling them, oh, our new single's coming out, and that's about it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, uh, that's true. I love my friends. Yeah. I know them all by name. Do you? Monty. Splotch, Sprockles. Mr. Tibbs, yeah, uh, the Funtles, uh, Crunch yeah. Bucket, Wendy, Nancy Face, Tibbs, yeah. And you all, do you all get together and have little parties every now and again? No. You and your MySpace no, friends? No. I got a very rewarding message, though, the other day. Uh, somebody was asking me questions. Somebody else posted, oh, you know, uh, don't imagine that Joe Cornish actually reads this. 
he's very successful and busy. He's probably got a PA that just posts on it for him. <laughs> yeah, that's really what that's happens. That's really what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I have a PA. A baked PA. <laughs> <laughs> what? what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I don't really have that many friends on Facebook because I always assumed the whole point of Facebook was to make it an accurate representation of uh, how your friend network is constructed. And in fact, one of the enjoyable applications that you can get. Mm. Do you know about this whole thing? You can add applications. Sure, yeah. Right. One of the nice applications you can get is a, a sort of graphic representation of how all your friends are connected. And it's a, it's really an enjoyable, interesting little uh, look mm. at the sort of degrees of separation that connect all the people you know. It's really fun. You can... Uh, say, oh, wow, look at him. He knows, like, uh, the head of Channel 4 knows my friend over there. He can't be such a bad guy and all this kind of thing. Um, but I keep my friends down to admit. So, so, like, if you don't know me and you apply for friend status on my Facebook account, don't be offended if I just don't get back in touch with you because I don't want to snub you by saying refuse. Talk to me. Yeah. Yeah, all right. I don't want to snub you by saying no because that, that seems too harsh i'm flattered by the fact that you might want to be my friend so why would i rebuke you so roughly but i'm not gonna say yes because i don't know you and that's not the point of the thing right right so i only have a couple of hundred friends on there do you know what excites me about my facebook page what i've got a massive list of people wanting to be my friends so this is facebook or myspace facebook facebook right? i ignore them you ignore them i must have about 49 friend requests uh, i've got well over 350 now. have you really yeah and just I'm, ignore them. I'm not. When I say back. 49, I meant 49,000. Did you? I'm, I, I meant uh, 350,000. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's what I'm, I mean. But I go through them every now and again mm, just to make mm. sure I'm not missing anyone because you do like some of them slip through the net there. Mm. But then I just think, what am I doing? Because I don't have any salient information on my Facebook page. There's only one goofy picture of me or maybe two or something. Never respond to any pokes. If someone sends me a bottle of beer or whatever, I just don't do anything about it. If someone bites me as a vampire i just ignore them i was very depressed to find that one of my friends and this was someone who was a, a fan of the adam and joe show mm. got in touch and said, said oh yeah and, and i let her through the net this time how does she repay me a couple of weeks later she sends me one of the most disgustingly grotesque sort of uh fear factor circulars if you don't reprint this this will happen kind of thing and it was a really horrible one all about like i'm a nine-year-old girl dying of cancer do you want me to die if you don't send this to and it was like what the, why are you sending me that that's a slap right back in my face there for letting you into my little gang lesson learned yeah so anyway don't forget how long will this last though do you think in a couple of years time we'll all still have these uh these sites it'll well it'll mutate won't it somehow do you think yeah but no i, I i'm sure it's here to stay for a little while because it's a good enjoyable way of wasting your time but uh folks don't if you want to be my facebook friend don't worry about it too much go just go to my website okay adam buxton adam dash buxton dot co dot uk that's what it's all about it's not about the prodding and the free beers and the vampire bites okay now more music here's one that i chose for you folks this is them featuring van morrison as it says prominently on the cd just in case you're worried about who them are but this is from his old r&b days starting out in uh belfast was it belfast yeah 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 uh and this is a cover of a uh, bobby blue bland a uh, rhythm blues classic turn on your love light by them yes thank you that's delightful uh them featuring van morrison uh with turn on your love light hey this is adam and joe here this is our the last hour of our show but don't forget that the queens of noise are coming up to take you from 10 o'clock until the midnight hour here on new year's eve I wonder what van morrison is doing on new year's eve uh Drink, drinking question. drinking uh, quite heavily drink van morrison uh getting quite grumpy hard to believe that he's still having drinks. an argument probably in some kind of fly-blown pub <laughs> somewhere <laughs> like in mickey Ireland in barfly yeah and uh or, or shane mcgowan in that documentary about the about shane mcgowan do you remember when he's yes. in the pub there and where's he starts the singing, pub where's the pub ah oh, i love that uh love that shane <laughs> so of course we're having a uh, we've had a brilliant idea for this show which is to which is to look back at the at the year's <laughs> activities <laughs> yeah I, I thought that one yeah no one else is doing it um and of course 2007 was the year uh spoiler alert that harry potter died oh yeah of course everybody bought the new harry potter book he died and uh discovered that he died shut up that ron weasley mm. beat him to death right with a crockle stick a crockle bat a crockle bat yeah uh because he was jealous of the fact that <laughs> harry potter had had full <laughs> sexual intercourse 
with Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Yeah. So, and what a shock. I mean, loads of kids loved that series of books. <laughs> and what happened? But they opened the back of the book, and the last line was, To a bloody pulp. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing left recognisable was the scar on his crushed head. Of course, 2007 was also the year when uh, Harry Potter star Daniel Radcliffe uh, <laughs> presented his sausage to the nation on stage. To in, the nation's theatre critics. In, to the nation's theatre critics in Equus. That was this year, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, and I remember going to a, a dinner party... You know, we we can be a little bit a, a little bit risque at this time of the evening, can't we? Mm. I remember going to a, to a dinner party and some friends of mine had had seen Equus, mm -hmm. and being an idiot, all I wanted to know was about what, Potter's Potter's the wand. dimensions of the wand. Yeah, and you know what the man said very satisfyingly? It was a, it was a gay couple, uh, and and man number one and the gay couple turned to me and said, "It's a uh, <clears throat> um, sorry, I've had a slight mucus problem. <laughs> I'm trying to remember exactly what he said. Uh, he said, um." It's uh it's a grower, not a shower. He said it's a bobber. A bobber? A bobber. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah, here, here. Yeah. I don't think I know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah. So uh that was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Potter's wand. <laughs> Harry Potter's wand. Um but of course, uh a very tricky year there for Harry Potter fans, it being the end of the uh the series of books. I personally gave up halfway through the second one. Yes, so you, the, all the stuff we said before is wasn't uh, true, not necessarily accurate, no. and not meant to reflect badly on, uh, on us or anybody or anybody. Yeah, because we'd like to. Oh, avoid but there that we go. Harry Potter, Potter fans can still be excited about lots, lots more films that start well and get boring. She will. Uh, um, she'll keep the franchise going. Sure, she's somehow. inventing a new franchise. Is she Harriet Potter? Yeah, Harry Potter's sister. No. Yeah. You're being silly now, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, I just never know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good way to go, wouldn't it? Never know. La lady, lady wizards. Lady yeah, wizards. Terrible. She's got lady wizards in the Potter franchise. What are you talking about? Uh, here's one of the bands that I saw live this year. Very early on, I went to see the Arcade Fire playing in the uh, St. John's uh, Chapel in Smith Square. Uh, somewhere like that. Um, yeah, in London. You know, in Westminster. Do you yeah. remember Smith Square? Yeah. Uh, Conservative Party headquarters around there, and in the uh, <laughs> chapel, there a lot. I'm always there campaigning, trying to get people to vote Conservative. Um, and the Arcade Fire played a gig in the little church there, and I went along with Julian Barrett, little name dropping for you from the Mighty Boosh and Rich Fulcher, and we were all grooving around at the front. What a gig it was! The Arcade Fire. Here's uh, a track from their first album, though. This is Neighborhood Number Three. Power out. Eaton Rumbles. Love that song. Before that, you heard the Arcade Fire, and I was saying that was one of my favourite gigs of the year. Did you have any favourite gig-going experiences from 2007, Joe mm. Cornish? I mean, I'm not a massive gig-goer myself. I think I only saw about three or four, but they were all pretty good. I saw Cornelius, I think, at the Festival Hall. That was very good. Who else did I see? I saw lots of people at Green Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, that, that might be it. Yeah, I didn't go to any festivals this year. I have to think a bit harder. I'll think a bit harder during the next record. I went to see Spoon at the Borderline. You know, I bang on about Spoon a lot. Yeah. Uh, they're one of my favourite bands. But, oh my gosh, it was the best gig ever. It was just incredible. The first time I've been to the Borderline, if you haven't been, folks, it's a little venue, kind of Tex-Mex bar with a teeny-weeny stage uh, right in the centre of town in London. And it's just great. And, of course, with somewhere that small, it's only about 300 people you can squeeze in there the sound is really really good and uh fantastic atmosphere totally comfortable and nice good crowd spoon were playing a blinder and uh, that was one of the best evenings i've ever had in my life and then we all we all went out afterwards and had a drink together because it turned out the guy i was with my friend there that night one of the people in the band recognized him as being in another band and he came across and said hey you're the guy from the band and we all i, I tagged along on their coattails but wow it was good fun man i had a great time and the other best gig i saw this year was in nîmes in france i was out there on my holidays and playing at that time were the arctic monkeys they were playing in the sort of roman Colosseum thing there in nîmes so we went along to see them and they were playing a double header with the arcade fire so it was arcade fire and the arctic monkeys the arctic monkeys slightly wiped the floor with the arcade fire it has to be said but uh it was amazing in this big open air amphitheater best gig of my life that one was totally converted to the monkeys which, as well which, hang on which one was the best one 
Just, one was the best night of your life. Yeah. The other one was the best gig of I your life. I am confused. They all melded into a big, amazing gig pot. Hey, listen, here's some uh, music from the olden times. Uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash. This is quite a little-known track, uh, but it's a great one. This is called Marrakesh Express. Crosby, Stills and Nash with the Marrakesh Express. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, coming up to sort of the final segment of our new year's eve show what's the service like on the marrakesh express uh it's very erratic is it yeah you allowed to use your mobile on there or is it a quiet express uh no mobiles no no it's all very retro right 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 yeah it's just for asking what kind of sandwiches have they got there uh i don't know what sandwiches no pork no pork. That's no. a shame. I was looking forward to a ham yeah, and egg. No sausages, mate. Sandwiches on the Marrakesh Express. So, uh, uh, another big event of uh, of 2007. I know you're not much of a video gamer, Adam, but uh, it was, of course, the year that, that Halo 3 came out. Oh, great. Yeah, Master Chief, he's a man in a green outfit and a helmet, goes around shooting grunts and jumping around and stuff. Yeah. A very popular game. It made $170 million in 24 hours. Wow. So it's the highest grossing in terms of speed, the fastest and highest grossing pop cultural product ever. Oh my lord. Mm. Halo 3. Halo 3. Is it, um, like Space Invaders? It is like, well, kind of, yeah, it is, in yeah. fact, because the basic geometric dynamics <laughs> of uh, video games mm. are kind of the same. You know, it's still attempting to shoot things before they shoot you. Right. But uh, the perspective's changed a little. Yeah, yeah. And the, you know, the realism of the surroundings has changed a bit right. since then. Now when you see adverts for video games in the olden days, it used to remind you that what you were seeing was not actually representative of the gameplay, mm. i.e. it might have a fancy mm. CG title sequence, but once you started playing, it would be a block. Footage not in game, yeah. I would say. Yeah, right it would be corner, all blocky. Yeah. But now it doesn't say that so much. It, now it says it actually is a representation of the gameplay. Footage in game. In game. Yeah. Because it is exactly. wickle wackles the air. It's all it wackly wackles, and wickly. Yeah. all over the area. And you know, as a, uh, I'm a big movie fan, as you know. Mm. Um, in fact, trying to think about gigs that I've been to, most of my big, uh, big uh, events this year have been amazing trips to, to films and stuff. Mm. But um, Like Beowulf. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> Uh, but one, you know, one of the most exciting things, or one of the most kind of weird things, is that video games have almost got better than films. Really? Yeah, I find myself sitting in cinemas with my thumbs twitching. Right. Wanting to control things. How many hours of 2007 were spent in front of your uh, play box? You know, not many. Yeah. I did play Halo 3 through. Have you got the Wii Wii? I've got a Wii Wii. Yeah, Nick Frost gave me his Wii Wii. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Frosty. It is nice. And are you playing any sports on there? Uh, I played it for a bit. I put it away. Really? Yeah. Why? What's the problem? Lack of games, Adam. Lack Not of enough games. games on the Wii. The, but Christmas is looking good for Wii owners. But, you know, generally I try to moderate my video game usage. Mm. It's like recreational drugs, which, of course, one shouldn't use at all. No, never. But were one to, you just, you know, once or twice a year. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah? Oh, it's time for the news now. Are you ready for the news? I can't ha handle any more news. I can't handle the truth. All right? Say, uh, You want lies. You just want made-up news. Yeah, I would love yeah. some made-up news. Okay, here's the news for Adam. Uh, here's the news for Adam Buxton. Everything's fine. Yeah. What Everywhere. Else? How about it. rabbits? Are they rabbits getting on okay? Are all jumping around. Oh, thank goodness. Now here's the real news. Now. Oh no. That's the kinks with You Really Got Me. Hey, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. The home of, uh, the BBC and the home of music. And the, and the number six. Uh, we are in our last half hour here. It's, bef you know, oh my goodness. Only half hour left of our show, and then it's uh, the Queens of Noise coming up for two hours and to take you to midnight. What? They have three hours. The three hours. What? Do you want to do that again? They have to yeah, that was a disaster. That whole thing. Hey, there you go. That's the Kinks with "You Really Got Me." This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. This is the last half hour of our show, and then after that, the Queens of Noise will be here to take you through to midnight and beyond. Uh, now, we were talking about television there while the music was playing a little bit, and we were grooving around to the music. Yeah, we're not just ignoring the music. We were grooving and uh, jumping about and, and talking about te television at the same time. What were your TV highlights <laughs> this year, Joe Cornish? Well, I enjoyed uh, I enjoy Flight of the Concords. Yeah. Uh, I've sort of fallen out of love with telly this year a bit, Adam, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. But uh, the only thing I found myself watching was uh, To the Manor Bowen to the on Manor Living Bowen. Television, which oh, is we've... a reality series about Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen's family moving to the country. I don't know what happened. I happened to catch it one week. 
then I pressed series record, <laughs> and since then it's become sort of like eating, I don't know, processed cheese or something, yeah. or a big chocolate, uh, you know, mousse. A big but back to the chocolate. A mousse. big chocolate man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, well, my my girlfriend and I are quite obsessed with that. And uh, but yeah, Flight of the Concords I like. I like their songs a great deal. Uh, they could it's speed it up a bit. Business. They could speed the whole thing up a bit. Oh, come on. No, I'm being pedantic. It's good, man. Um, but it's that school of comedy where everything's, uh, fed out very slowly, which we should do more of. In fact, <laughs> we probably do it anyway, don't we? Uh, not to say that what we're doing now could be described as comedy, but when we do proper stuff, you know, you know? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, Fight the Concord's brilliant. Highly recommend it. What else was good? Uh, Armstrong mm. and Miller. That was a very good, that was like Smash. a return to old school, uh, proper solid British sketch comedy. Exactly. Not too catchphrasy, properly thought out, nice and posh. Really nicely produced, well written. Yeah. And they're hilarious, man. That was some, that was some of the best very stuff good. I saw. Uh, <laughs> what else was good? There was, I felt like there was a lot of good stuff on this year. Err, uh, I'm trying to think of it now though. Oh yeah, Peter Serafinowicz's show I very that much was good. enjoyed. Um, and, uh, well, I enjoyed the jungle show, you know, but things like Doctor Who and Life on Mars, which were the sort of the biggest stories on TV in a way, never really grabbed me, I must say, uh, that much. Have you ever watched Life on Mars? Uh, no. I'm told it's amazing. Like, everyone it's says to be amazing. it's really, really good. I spent most of my time watching American stuff on DVD, you know, like The Wire and all that sort of yeah. business, which I really dug with a massive great uh, shovel. And also I got sucked into, you know, still dragging on with things like um, the Mystery Island program, Lost. Mm. Sort of looking forward to seeing that come back. But Heroes 2, I felt like a jerk. I felt like a jerk for watching se season one of that. When that one came back, that was stinking the whole room out. I got out of the Heroes box. Really? Yeah. And then uh, what was the other one that was similar to that? Prison Break very disappointing series three i thought prison break he, he had trouble didn't he he got in trouble with the with the law the man in that i'll tell you about that during the next song uh, in real life in real mean? life yeah and but heroes the creator of heroes admitted that they'd uh they'd uh, messed up the second series so there was a big piece in an american magazine with him uh kind of you know uh accounting for his what's the phrase for his sins what's the phrase atoning atoning that's right for the sins they'd done in the first half of season two saying that they messed it all up and, and pledging to recover too little too late mate sorry mm. um but what though how does the writer's strike affect all this stuff because i noticed prison break has gone on hiatus now for, yeah for well Christmas. no one's allowed to write yeah uh well you well, we can't be sure they might have resolved it uh by t by tonight who knows yeah but um as of uh recording this transmission mm. uh that it, it's unresolved it's unlikely to get resolved over christmas because everyone goes home and stuffs their turkeys yeah and stuff but uh, it's looking a little bit bleak. Oh my lord! Yeah. But anyway, I w I'd love to have a pre-prepared list of TV highlights to look forward to, but I don't. For next year, I've got, I've got <laughs> nothing. Good. Got absolutely nothing. I know that there's going to be a new series of Flight of the Concords, so I'm looking forward to that because, uh, yeah, that's an absolute smash. And uh, hey, my show's going to be on on BBC Three in January. Me box the pilot, and who knows that might even get commissioned. Wow, that's exciting! So uh, all that to look forward to. Let's hey, play some more. Yeah, some yeah. Pet Shop Boys. Uh, this is called West End Girls. You might have heard it. It's a kind of depressing song about being uh, alone and gay in Soho in the in the mid eighties uh, and hanging around outside shops. And you know what? It it links cleverly with uh, what we were just talking about because Flight of the Concourse did a brilliant parody of it in one of their early shows in Series One. Here it is, the Pet Shop Boys, West End Girls. I think you were saying. We tie balloons on this steel willoy. I doubt he was saying that. He would. I'm sure. I don't think he anyone was. else uses that word. Willoy. I'm tying balloons on this steel willoy. That was uh, folds with balloons. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music coming into the last little uh, segment of our show here. Uh, and of course, from ten o'clock, you can listen to the Queens of Noise playing all kinds of exciting. Well, they've got. They're having like a big party. They're and they've got a party. We uh, haven't been invited. We've been told to stay away. We've been told to get out of Actually, it because I have been invited. Have you? Yeah, but you haven't. Oh no, because uh, we're not sexy enough, apparently, or I'm not sexy mm. enough. Joe's being you allowed. Figured it out. You figured it out. Oh. Yeah, but they'll be playing all sorts of exciting party music uh, and all sorts of crazy, probably chit chat and talking. Oh. Uh, and bands are going to be playing live. It's going to be all, all over, exploding all over the shop. All sprinkly. Uh, from 10 till midnight. And then, of course, at midnight, everything changes. What, what happens? The world changes. Oh. It's a new year. All, uh, genetic material in all living, uh, beings and tissues renews itself. Snakes shed their skin. Uh, you know, all that kind of thing yeah. goes on. It's a brand new world. And here's, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm getting my life together. 
Really? Yeah. You're going to start afresh. I'm going to absolutely... What are your New Year's resolutions? Uh, I'm going to get incredibly fit and very tall within right. a week right. of the New Year starting. And also, I'm going to stop torturing people. Right. Because there's just... I mean, it's just wrong to get information out of wrong. them like that. I'm yeah. not going to do it anymore. Not even if I really want to know right. stuff. I'm not going to do that. What about you? My New Year's resolutions? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, I really don't know. I'm going to also... My New Year's resolution is going to be over 300 DPI. Really? Yeah. Quite high. That's high resolution. Yeah, man. because I'm sick of just yeah. everything being a little blurry. I'm going 1080p. Are you really? Yeah. Not Maybe... 1080... Not 1080i. Right. Not 720. No. Or 4... 50. That's a really... I'm going full high definition. That's the brilliant resolution. Yeah, thanks, man. You'll uh, be able to see every detail. Ooh. You'll be able to see the blackheads on my nose. Oh, wow. And the hairs on my ears. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's exciting. You know, I was just remembering uh, earlier on, I popped out to the lavvy there just during the Pet Shop Boys track and uh, had a little reverie about previous New Year's and I remembered one terrible one. You weren't there, actually. I was staying with some friends in a big house in scotland and it was a big party there and it was in the olden days when we were doing the adam and joe show it was our first series mm. and the we did we did like a weird little sort of pilot series with just four episodes in it to begin with and the fourth episode went out on new year's eve uh 1997 i think and six uh 96 was it yeah um well the first episode of the adam and joe show it was December 96. Right, there you go. Yeah. And so it went out uh, on New Year's Eve 97. Uh, si seven. <laughs> and it was going out like, it, it didn't end at midnight, but it was, I think, on 11 o'clock or something on Channel 4. Basically, I forced everyone at this party to sit down and watch the show as it went out live, because I was so excited about it, you know. I mean, I was uh, amazed that we had a, a show on TV at all. But I made everyone sit down and watch it. So basically, the whole party ground to a halt, and they didn't. It, they didn't really dig it. Um, so it was very embarrassing, and I had uh, one of the worst New Years of my life. Great, a uh, story great there for upbeat you. story. <laughs> um, we're going to play a bit more music now. Yeah, this yeah. is this is a smash. Uh, you know, again, um, I was talking about what was it? The Clash people sort of worrying about them selling out when they did should i stay or should i go this was around the time that pe the doors were losing it as far as doors fans were concerned but again i always had a soft spot for this one this is from the album uh soft parade i believe and it's a track called touch me by the doors there you go that's the doors with touch me hey this is adam and joe here on six music that's almost it well it's pretty much it for us here on new year's eve stay tuned for the queens of noise they're coming up for three hours of madness and mayhem to take you through midnight and into 2008 but uh that's that's pretty much it we're gonna be back in the new year of course i mean next weekend even we'll be with you folks so don't despair okay and of course you might be listening again to this show it might not actually be new year's eve for you at all Imagine that. It's confusing, isn't it? Shifting. There's no such thing as uh, time anymore. What, with the internet? They've got rid of time. There's no such thing as kind of, you know, the uh, the social gelling of uh, of media. Yeah. Now it's disparate. It's schismed. Everybody listens to it at different times. Exactly. No, yeah. no you'll never have that moment when... Get uh, used to it. It's part of the future. A 28 million people all sat around their tellies warming their hands to David Jason falling through a bar or whatever it was on Only Fools and Horses. It'll never happen again. <laughs> i think it's uh not true actually because that thing cram cramford is it called cramford right millions of people are watching that that's got the biggest ratings in the world it's sort of comfort victorian comfort food yeah and you know what millions of people listen to this no no you're right they don't <laughs> uh so this I'm has been uh, adam and joe thanks very much for listening you know the, the record we're gonna play out with is 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 a kind of a hippity hoppity record by common uh, and, you know, things have been a tiny bit solipsistic on the show uh, this week because we haven't had our usual features, so we've done more than our fair share of uh, annoying name-dropping and that sort of thing. Uh, and I would go into a spiel about why this song means things to me, but um, I'm not going to. But I like it anyway, and it's one of the big hits of the summer. Uh, go and on, you can go into your spiel. It's New Year's Eve. Oh, it just reminds me of driving around Los Angeles. With Miss Daisy. Uh, with Miss Daisy, yeah. My white elderly charge yeah um who is racist but 
you know, in a sweet. way that's sweet and, and sort of uh, anachronistic, so I don't really mind. And they're making a film about it. Really? In the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Who's going to play you? Um, uh, Brad Pitt? Not uh, Morgan Freeman would be better, I think. No, he's not good looking enough, isn't he? It's Brad Pitt. Okay, playing me. Good. I can't wait for that. Yeah, it's exciting. Is isn't that it? coming out this year? It's it's tip for Oscar success. Right. Yeah. And they should. Oh, here's what they should call it. Mm. Jojo's Drive Machine. Yeah. Are they you think? Call, yeah. I think they should call it that. Or Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah. No, Jojo's Drive. Jojo's Machine. Drive Machine. Yeah um is that it then that's pretty much it well happy new year listeners thanks a lot for for bearing with us if you have for the last three hours and we'll see you we'll see you over the other side of the new year yeah listen have a fantastic evening i hope it all goes well for you whether it's new year's eve or whenever you listen to this show and uh thanks so much for listening to us in general here on six music we can't wait to be back with you in 2008 yeah here's uh our last record this is by common this is called the people love you bye, bye.